Today we're going to discuss how a district attorney who drove a Mini Cooper disappeared. Today's case, we're going to discuss the case of Ray Greekhart. He was a district attorney out of Center County, Pennsylvania, which is the county of where Penn State University is. We will just discuss a little bit of Ray's life before we get into his disappearance. Ray Greekhart was born on October 9th of 1945 in Cleveland, Ohio. The Cleveland, Ohio area was where Ray grew up. Ray went to Gilmore Academy, a Catholic school near Cleveland, Ohio. He received his undergraduate degree from University of Dayton, which was also in Ohio. During his undergraduate years, he became interested in pursuing a legal career after he interned in a district attorney's office. He received his law degree at Case Western University. Ray met his first wife, Barbara Gray, during his undergraduate years at the University of Dayton. They were married in 1969. They adopted a baby girl, Laura, in 1978. The family moved from Ohio to Center County, Pennsylvania for Ray's wife, Barbara, to take a job at Penn State University in 1980. Ray's first couple years in Center County, Pennsylvania were as a stay-at-home dad. In 1985, the current district attorney of Center County, Pennsylvania was retiring. His position was going to be filled by a, a general election, and Ray actually knew people in the community, and they actually encouraged him to run for that position. He did win that position and became the new district attorney of Center County. Ray did very well in this position. He won every election for this specific position, and he beat all challengers. In the 90s, he was able to even turn this position into a full-time position which it was only a part-time position prior. And up until 2005, Ray was the district attorney of Center County. So the community was very pleased with what he was doing. Ray planned on retiring towards the end of 2005, and he was apprehensive about it. He appeared to really like his job and enjoyed the work, and he was also a fixture in the community. Let's jump to his disappearance. In 2005... Ray had actually ended his first marriage to Barbara, and he was actually married and divorced again uh, as well. He was actually now in just a re relationship with a girlfriend named Patty Fornicola, who was his current girlfriend. She actually also worked at the district attorney's office as well, and they were in a relationship for around two to three years at this point in 2005. Let's talk about his disappearance. Ray's last confirmed contact was with his girlfriend, Patty, on April 15th of 2005. Ray had actually taken that day off. He called off very impromptu. It was a Friday, and he just decided, hey, I'm going to sit this one out today. I'm going to uh, take a day off. Ray was planning on spending his day off going on a nice leisurely drive throughout central Pennsylvania. He had a Mini Cooper, and that's a fun car to drive around country roads. Patty was working that day and she went about her day. She went to her job. She came home. She didn't see Ray there, but she wasn't overly concerned. She figured he may have just stopped at a bar, caught a movie, something along those lines. So she went to the gym, but when she came back and couldn't find Ray and couldn't get in contact with Ray, that is when she reported him missing to the police. The next day, Ray's car was found, and this day would be April 16th of 2005, near the Street of Shops in Lewisburg, Pennsylvania, which would be about 60 miles away from Ray's office in Belfonte, Pennsylvania. The police searched his car and found his cell phone, but they could not find his work-issued laptop. There appeared to be no signs of struggle at his car, and there was also a cigarette butt found in his car, which was very suspicious to a lot of people because Ray was not a smoker and he hated smoking. His car was found right next to the Susquehanna River, which was also concerning to a lot of Ray's friends and family because in 1996, Ray had a brother, Roy, who was found, his body was found in a creek slash river. 
and the police ruled it as a suicide. Uh, this happened in Ohio, but Ray never believed that his brother committed suicide. He believed his brother was most likely murdered. The police looked around the Susquehanna River for any sign of Ray, but they could only find his car. Then, several weeks later, on July 30th, 2005, Ray's computer was actually found under a bridge that was a couple miles away from Ray's, Ray's car. Then, around October 1st of 2005, so this is around two months later after they found the laptop, they did find Ray's hard drive, which was originally missing from his laptop computer. They found his computer, but they didn't have his hard drive. Then two months later, they did find the hard drive. But the hard drive was so damaged and water damaged that they couldn't extract any information from his hard drive. And after his hard drive was found, the case largely goes cold. It is reported, though, that Ray was seen at the street of shops and he was with a, a woman who was apparently... 25 years younger around 35 ray at this time was about 59 years old but it's reported that their interaction seemed as friends not as a romantic relationship but that was also reported that that did come out uh there was this kind of mystery woman that ray was was linked to at the street of shops About six years later, in July of 2011, Ray was legally declared dead in absentia. Since that verdict has been reached, there's been very few updates in this case. Let's talk now about some of the theories. Ray was a district attorney, and he put in prison lots of people, and there have been, been reports that maybe someone could have came... There have been reports that someone he prosecuted come, could have came back from revenge and killed him. There hasn't really been, I feel, a lot of strong evidence presented for that case, so I, I don't put too much stock into that theory. Something that's really interesting about the, the this case is Ray actually had a connection to Jerry Sandusky. He is the disgraced Penn State uh, assistant coach who was convicted of molesting several children, and Penn State University largely... It largely didn't do anything to protect the children and was and, and essentially kind of looked the other way. And Ray actually was part of a small investigation into Jerry Sandusky, but he chose not to prosecute him. And many feel this was just due to a lack of evidence. I, I think it was reported he had like two kids saying that Jerry Sandusky did this, but he had felt that that was not enough information to bring about a prosecution. Some people believe that somehow Jerry Sandusky or Penn State could have murdered Ray to keep him quiet, that maybe he knew something about this case. I don't really put too much stock into that. I think that would have came out by now after Jerry Sandusky was already convicted and their criminal trial was done and the investigation was launched into Penn State by various government agencies. I, I think something would have came out of that, and there's really been no strong lead after the, these Penn States, after the Penn State scandals. Some people believe Ray committed suicide. They believe he jumped into the river and his body went into like a dam or something and was destroyed. I don't really think that's uh, a good likelihood. I don't put too much stock in that case either. I, I, I don't think that is the best theory in this case because it doesn't make sense why he would destroy his computer as well if he was committing suicide. His brother Roy, Ray's brother Roy, reportedly committed suicide and many people felt that there was a connection there. But it doesn't really appear that Ray... After the investigation I've done in this case, I don't really see that being a strong candidate for Ray. Ray had an adult daughter. He had a girlfriend. He had money. He he had a good job, and he was going to get a pension. So it just doesn't seem like you're. Why would you commit suicide because you're retiring? He could have gone into private practice in law, and he had 
probably a lot of good opportunities in that. So I'm, I don't think there's that much stock in the, the, the suicide. I think the best theory in this case is Ray actually ran away to start a new life. 90% of these disappearance cases that I've investigated, the, the running away to start a new life always comes up. But I, I feel in so many of these cases, they're either these people don't even have the life experience to do this or the money to do this or the means to do this. I think in this case, it could be different. Ray worked in law enforcement. He f would know how to change his identity. And he also had a good income. In Ray's financial records, which I've looked into, it appeared to be very strange that he didn't really have a large financial record sheet. He seemed to buy a lot of stuff with cash and Ray reportedly didn't have a lot of money in this bank account that was connected to this case, which I think Ray could have over years prepared a, a huge cash pile, which he could have used to start a new life, leave the country. He had the means to do so and he seemed to have essentially support in the community and, and I think there would have been ways for Ray to to essentially stash money away. Ray also wasn't married at the time, so that would make it easier for him to essentially uh, go somewhere else. And Ray was uh, a pretty fascinating guy. He supposedly had some interest in like a time travel or a story revolving time travel. He seemed to be fascinated about this police detective that, that vanished uh, from his hometown in Cleveland to, to start a new life. So this was not a guy who just like watched football and whatever. Just he, he seemed to have a he seemed to be deeper than the the typical person. He also didn't have any biological children as well, so that would make it easier for him to to flee. I would imagine. As well as Ray also spent time in Slovenia, and some people have even reportedly thought that Ray was a spy. Which sounds crazy, but Ray Ray traveled to Slovenia. He was supposedly was fluent in Slovenian, and I, I think Ray could be out there. He's also an older guy, so just older people generally don't stand out as much. And I really think if he went to Europe, he went to Eastern Europe, uh, Russia, even I, I think he could have disappeared. And I think this case really would, if I was. The, the, if I was investigating this case fully, I would really look into his financial records to see where exactly he was spending his money because he had a good salary as a district attorney. And I would want to know as much as I could, you, you know, where his money was going. And I, I, and I think uh, a, a running away to start a new life is a, is a really good theory in this case. As always, thanks for watching this video. And hopefully this video brings some kind of resolution to this case. Thank you.